Well, originally, I thought there was something physically wrong with me because I had experiences like my vision was distorting. So I'd sort of get almost telescopic vision, a bit like vertigo, but it would just happen as I was sort of walking around in the street. It's like the buildings would like be moving or coming back together or they'd like everything would zoom out really far away or suddenly come really close. And I went to the doctors and they just tested everything and then they said there's nothing wrong with you. But it was just like really frightening. Um, at that point I started having voices um, and just crying and when I went to have the assessment I was so severely sort of shut down. They said that's because I'd experienced abuse as a child. But then I'd also had a very abusive relationship. And so I just learned to like cut those things off and, and um, it was like it didn't happen to me. So although on one level, I knew those things had happened to me, I didn't feel like they had. Get you! And I had really sketchy memories about anything happening. So it's taken a long time to sort of become more aware. I think when you start your abuse when you're very, very young, I think your brain just doesn't process it in any way. And I think I spent the first three or four years of my life sort of not having feelings about things, getting my emotions totally battened down and under control. And then at four, um, I went to see a ballet. And having always lived on a farm, this was like going to another world. There was another world out there. And so that's when the first big split came into different parts because there was a part who could cope and go and enjoy the, this magical world out there that we didn't know existed. And the part who lived on the farm and had to cope with the other side of things. I used to have a lot of this awful pain that I just cannot describe. I've never been in pain like it and it would just come every night. And I'd sort of be writhing around in, in, in bed in absolute agony. And then in the morning it would be gone. And apparently that is like a trauma response as well, so post-traumatic response. And your body can actually hold memories. Of, of pain. So it's like when when those barriers begin to break down, the pain that you experience, or which you didn't experience all those years ago, you do suddenly start to experience. If you've got DID, chances are your abuse started when you were very young, pre-five, often pre-verbal. So it's part of your whole organic system. It's not something that happened after you'd had seven, eight years of a fairly good childhood and it's it's part of who you are it's part of your your circulation rather than something that you know about but i think that one of the common some of the common threads are like things like oh you can go with this person you can trust them so most of us have an awful issue with what does trust mean if you're sent off with somebody you're told you can trust and they take you to a paedophile ring how do you hold that? How do you learn what trust is? Oh, you're safe here, and then you're badly abused. To start off with, there's always been me and Louisa, I think, since I was little, and I sort of feel like she's grown up with me. Um, I think for a long time, Louisa was me. I don't really know how to describe. I think I was so shut down that Louisa took over. I think Louisa was the one that raised the kids for a large part. 
Louise was definitely the one that went out to work. She's really different to me. She's very sort of business-like, quite a prim and proper. Um, I'm quite disorganised. She's incredibly organised. She does all my like written work at uni and stuff. I, I get into a real old, old model. So I didn't, when I sort of became like conscious, it's like the kids thought I'd really changed. It's, it's like my personality had changed because I felt that she'd been running the ship for such a long time. Um, and then there's the boy who who was around when I was like a teenager. Um, and that happens a lot with people that have been abused, that they identify themselves as like being the other sex. Because if you're a boy, you can sort of like, you know, be a bit tougher maybe. I call every, all the different parts my inside family because that's how I view them. And we range from more or less birth up to me at 65. And so of course we have different interests, different tastes literally in food, clothes and all those sort of things. It's, it's, it's an enormous range, but further on in my journey, like where I am now, where we all know we're in one body and we're all sharing this body, we also share so many more things. And I had a really, really exciting moment on Sunday morning. We'd gone out for a long bike ride. And there used to be one part who used to, because she didn't feel she'd been brave as a child, she used to um, fold her arms when we were going down really steep hills on this bike. And she used to put the fear of into me. And then on Sunday morning, we had an agreement that we wouldn't do it going down the hill, but we could all do it on the flat. And we were going, yes, we can still do this. We can still do it. Look, we can ride with no hands on our bike. <laughs> and it was just lovely.